Hi guys, I thought today I'd show you a very simple way to solve what to some people is a difficult problem. Um, when repairing uh, graphics cards in particular and sometimes motherboards, it's useful to know if the, the GPU has all the power rails present or you know a motherboard's starting up but nothing's happening, it's not booting as to whether the GPU or the CPU is actually trying to access the BIOS as it's trying to execute some code to start. And normally the way you would do that is you would go to the BIOS chip and you'd find the chip select or enable pin, which on an 8-pin BIOS, this is an 8-pin BIOS chip, very typical, uh, sometimes in a socket on motherboards. But on these types of chips, it's almost always pin 1 as the enable or chip select. But by looking up the part number for the BIOS chip, you can go on the internet and just search for the part number for data sheet and you'll find it and it'll tell you which is the enable pin or chip select. So, as I say, normally you would get your oscilloscope, you'd put it onto pin 1, you would start it up and have a look to see if you can see any negative pulses. Uh, the chip select is active low, so when it goes to 0, the GPU or the CPU are trying to read the BIOS. And that's great, it'll give you a very quick indication of what is or isn't happening on a GPU that will not give a picture or a, or a motherboard that will power on but won't boot. The problem is, of course, whether you have an oscilloscope. I mean, I know a lot of you guys don't have access to that sort of equipment. And I thought, well, you know, I've suggested on forums and people come back and say, but I haven't got an oscilloscope, Rich. I thought, well, you know, there must be a simpler way to do this with cheap equipment. And at first I thought to use a little pulse counting circuit. You can buy little things off uh, AliExpress uh, for about five euros that will count pulses. I thought, oh, that would be a good way to try this. And I actually ordered one. And the only problem I can see with that is that a lot of these pulse counters are powered 5 volts. And a lot of these BIOSes are 3.3 volts and some are even 1.8 volts. And would you have to build a type of level converter? Is there going to be some complication depending on the voltage of the, of, of the chip? And it suddenly occurred to me while I was just waiting for the pulse counter to arrive. There's actually a much easier way of doing this, yeah? Using something which you've probably all got on your desk already. And if you haven't, you can build one using four components. So uh, my idea was, well, on my uh, desk... I've got some of these attached to the computer. Yeah, little speakers. Touchy the thing, yeah? These sort of things, you get them for putting into your mobile phone, into your computer. And I'm sure we can use this to detect whether there's any pulses on the chip select. Because when I touch this, any interruption of the voltage, I, I guess the microphone's picking that up, yeah. So that was my idea. So let's let's try. Let's see whether we can use this to detect whether the BIOS is being accessed. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a socket because I still need to use this on my computer sometimes. So we plug it into the socket, and I can see that the middle pin when I touch that, especially if I find something to touch it with, you'll hear the crackling again. Yeah. Can you hear as I'm doing that? Yeah. So I'm going to wire from there, and then this is ground. And I'm not going to connect this directly to the board because there could be some DC voltage on this. I don't think there would be. So to be safe, I'm going to put a capacitor in the circuit. This is a, a 0.1 microfarad, a 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor. So I'm going to attach this onto here. In fact, let's do it while we talk about it. So we're here out here with our socket. We'll get a little bit of solder and we'll zoom the camera down. So all we're going to do is we're going to take the 100 nanofarad, 0.1 microfarad capacitor and we're going to solder it onto here. In fact, you can hear my speakers buzzing I'm doing it, yeah? And this is ground. So let's just take our capacitor and we'll just tag it onto this pin. There we go. Okay. Soldered on there. That's our capacitor. Now, from the other end of the capacitor, I'm going to take... This is an old, just an old meter probe. It's a nice sharp one. 
and it doesn't have a plug on the end of it. So I'm going to solder this to the other end of my capacitor. And this is going to be the probe for probing the circuit board. So we'll just uh, solder this onto here, just get a good connection with it. Okay. And there's our probe attached to our capacitor, okay? Probably not the best bit of soldier in the world, but it's not going to fall off. Uh, we're now going to take a, a crocodile clip lead. Again, just a piece of wire with a crocodile clip on. And this, we're going to solder to ground. Which is our little connector is actually here. And let's see if I get the focus just to come back in. So it's obviously just drifted a little bit. There you go. Okay, so we'll take our uh, earth wire crocodile clip. And that's it, it's on there. So now we have our, our tester. It's isolated by the capacitor, so no DC voltage can flow. I don't know if you can hear it, but as I touch that, I get a click. Okay, so let's now see if this actually works the way I'm hoping it will work. This is an Asus uh, graphics card, uh, 7600 GS. Uh, G force thing, I think. Um, so we'll use this just initially to try the system to just make sure that nothing untoward happens as it's not of any value. And uh, I use this for testing motherboards, so I know it's a good graphics card. So I'm going to take the ground clip and just clip it to the motherboards. So I've grounded that. I'm going to take my probe, and on this one, this is the BIOS chip. I found that by looking up the part numbers of the 8 pin chips. And then if I wasn't sure, just go on the internet and look for the data sheet. Yeah, but in this case, this is the BIOS chip. So as I touch it, you hear a click. I'm hoping the microphone's going to pick this up. I'll, I'll play the recording back afterwards to be sure. So I'm on there. I'm going to power it up. And let's have a look to see what happens. Yeah. Um, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll move the camera around as well so you can see the screen. One moment. Okay, that's ready to go. So we'll take the probe. I'll put the probe onto the chip select, pin one. Make a good, yeah, I've got a good contact, that's on there. Let's start it, so we're gonna be listing out for clicks on the speakers, and we're gonna watch what happens on the screen. Okay, here we go. Put the power on, <laughs> always a good move, yeah, let's go. Right, yeah, click, click, yeah, you hear that. And then the thing goes bleep, and a second or two after that, we should have, yes, there's this writing on the screen. So let's just go again. So switch it off, switch it on. There's a click when I first switch on. Now wait. There, bubble. Do you hear it, yeah? Bleep. And then the picture comes on the screen. Okay, so we can actually hear that accessing the chip, the, the BIOS chip. Okay, that was quite successful. Um, so let's try another one. This is a GTX 750 Ti, which does power up, but has lines on the screen. It's either got a video RAM fault, or it's got a bad reflow work. Somebody's been working on this before, or the memory control on the GPU, or maybe even the reflow on the GPU. So this will be used on a later video. And by the way, this is the one that was on the Christmas special where I discovered I hadn't plugged in the 12 volt cable the long way around by using board view <laughs> which was fun if you haven't watched that you know, go dig it out christmas special number one so here's our meter probe and on this one the bios chip is here and you'll probably get a click when i first touch it you probably didn't it was quiet so i'm on i'm in, i'm on pin one of the chip there that's on pin one put power on now let's see what this one does now i know what it will do it will take about 25 30 seconds before I get a picture on the screen. I've got the camera pointing at the screen, so you, you'll see that it comes up on there. So let's power this up and see what we get. One bump and you turn it on. But nothing's happening. Now we wait. Disease. The bleep and the clunk on the on the on the speakers, right? And we've got some writing on the screen. 
So that one again, you got difference about a conk as it accessed the BIOS. So yeah, again, let's try another one. So I've got a board here now which doesn't boot. Let's see what this one does. So this uh, graphics card powers up. It's an R9390X, powers up, but uh, doesn't give a picture. Uh, the computer will bleep because it's got onboard video on. If you switch the onboard video off, it, it just gives like the, the tone one long and three short bleeps to say the graphics card isn't there. So we'll go again onto pin one, we're there. And again, let's power this up and let's see if we can hear it accessing the BIOS. Put the power on. Okay, go. See, and there's a bleep, but there's no clicks on the speaker. So we know for sure that this one is not accessing the BIOS. It never gets as far as reading the BIOS. And that's useful information that when we come to actually repair this card. So that works. Yeah, I'm pleased with the results of that. And it's a very cheap and easy way to do this. Let's see if we can uh, check if some motherboards are accessing the BIOS now as well. I've connected the monitor to the onboard uh, video because this is not working. But I'm assuming the onboard video will give me a picture even with this attached, let's find out. But mostly we're going to go on to the BIOS. So this is a Gigabyte, it's a main BIOS and backup BIOS. So we'll go on to the main BIOS, pin 1. Now I'm expecting this when it boots up to be accessing this BIOS multiple times, executing code. So let's have a listen to the speakers and see what we can actually hear on this one. Okay, and then we get a picture. You can see it very clearly with the, uh, there they are. So we can see clearly that was accessing the BIOS multiple times while it was running code and uh, eventually booted up and then it stopped accessing the BIOS. So let's try a motherboard that does power up but doesn't boot up and let's see what happens in the case of that one. This is an MSI motherboard that powers on but doesn't boot, it doesn't bleep, it doesn't do anything. Uh, in this case, this is the BIOS chip with a little green label on. And once again, I'm on pin one, you hear the click that went onto the pin. So let's power this up and let's see what this one does. Well, first of all, let's switch the power supply on. Huh. Okay, one moment, guys. Put the, yeah, I think I'm on the wrong pin there to start it. Okay, back on, back on. Let's have a go. Now that one, as far as I can see, is actually accessing the BIOS, yeah? But it's not booting. <laughs> if I actually, would you believe it's actually just come on? <laughs> no, it doesn't give a picture. It doesn't give a picture. Yes, it does give a picture. This board previously wasn't working, by the way, so I just magically fixed it. So again, you could hear that as it was doing it, it was booting up. I did just mention uh, before I go that I would show you how to do this with a few salvage components if you don't have some of those speakers. I'd imagine probably all of you do have. Um, so we can make a very uh, simple circuit with uh, an end channel MOSFET. And this, this is all we need to do. So we have uh, one end channel MOSFET and it's not really particularly important which one you have to ground and from here we connect a little speaker okay and this goes to your supply voltage from the here this is your drain this is your source this is your gate okay here we have a resistor 22 kilo ohms okay and from here we have a capacitor we can use the same one we use in my circuit what 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad it's the same thing and this is where you connect your probe the um, other two connections as power and ground now this will run quite happily for five volt supply so what you can do is you can take from here five volts yeah, your ground zero volts and connect it to um, a Molex connector, you know, the type on the back of a hard drive, the old type. So if you, if you wire a Molex connector to here, 
when you want to power this up, you can just plug the power plug from your ATX power supply into the Molox male connector. And then you've just got your probe. That's all you need to do. You can fit a socket on here. You can plug your probe lead in here. And you can have your, your lead with your little probe on the end. Okay. And that's it. So that's all you do. One, put one socket. I'll just hardwire it on. And I would suggest you use a Molex connector and connect that to the ATX power supply uh, just to power it up with 5 volts. And that's all you need to do. Uh, the little speaker, I would suggest you use one of these, not a, a normal type speaker. These measure about 11 ohms resistance. So with 5 volts, let's just call this 10 ohms just for the sake of it. The current flowing through here when this is turned on is about 0.5 amps. Okay. So at 5 volts, half an amp, this will dissipate at the most about 2.5 watts. Yeah, at most. Um, you can attach a little heat sink. MOSFET wise, I'd use something like one of these. Uh, these are actually this one, VN66, there's lots. I mean, as long as it can handle more than, you know, 5 volts and half an amp, uh, let's handle one and a half amps, 15 watts, that's more than enough. And that little circuit will just do what we were doing with the speakers, although I suspect you've probably all got the speakers anyway. But if you want to make one, there you go, and use something like that, or, or an equivalent of that. Well, after auto magically fixing that one, uh, I think I've had a result. Um, okay, guys, so there's a different technique for you. If you don't have an oscilloscope, that's one way in which you can detect if the GPU or CPU are actually accessing the BIOS. Uh, would I do it that way? Yeah, I mean, I've got an oscilloscope. Look, I've got an oscilloscope. I'll use the oscilloscope. I'll still have a play with the uh, pulse counter when it arrives in a few weeks' time, and let's see if that gives any more information. But... I would say that this definitely will tell you whether or not the BIOS is being accessed. I've not seen it done before, so I think that's a first. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that, and see you all soon on another video. Adios, amigos. Hasta luego.